Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing N is for Noose, written by Sue Grafton. It's another mystery in the Alphabet Mystery series. It's not a very strong book. The mystery is okay. The beginning, I think, is weak and slow, and I didn't like the conclusion that much either. Also, I didn't like the fact that it takes Kinsey away from her home base again. So we get very little of those supporting characters. And I love those supporting characters. Rosie, William, and Henry. I like to see more of them. And I just get the feeling that this series is pushing away from them too much. Also in this book, we get a bit of a trope going on. About a crime in a small community who doesn't like outsiders. So that's happened a fair bit in different books or different movies or TV series for many years. It does open up, you know, different angles for Kinsey, and especially the series, because we haven't had that in this series yet, but I think it's a bit of a trope, and in some ways it can be used as a bit of a cop-out for the author, because it's too easy to say, the character couldn't do this or couldn't learn that, these people closed off because it's a small town, and they really trust outsiders. And that happened in this book many times, so it can be used as a cop-out, and I get a feeling that Sue Grafton may have done that once or twice in this book. Kinsey is on the way home from looking after Dietz. Dietz had a knee operation, so in the previous book, he had a bung knee, came back into Kinsey's life, and she agreed to go back to his home when he had his operation, and she looked after him for a couple of weeks while he was recovering. Now he can get around, so she wants to get back home. But she agrees to take on a case on the way back home. So she travels to a small town. And she meets up with Selma Newquist. And Selma's husband, Tom, who was a detective in the police in this small town, he died recently of natural causes. Nobody's contesting the death. Nobody's suspicious about how he died. What Selma wants to do is find out what was on his mind in the last few weeks before his death because she thought that he was acting differently, that he was troubled about something, and she wants to know what that is. That's all she wants. So that's the beginning of this mystery. So I think it's a very, very weak way to begin a mystery. And I just don't get why Kinsey, the character, would agree to this. I mean, it's easy money for her. She's going to get paid whether she finds out something or not. But I just think it's a very weak way to start the mystery. I think the setting was more important at the start than the mystery itself. You know, establishing this small town atmosphere, people are closed off, because that seemed to be established quite early on, with every person that Kinsey met at the very start was closed off a bit, and a bit untrusting of Kinsey's motives in this town. When Kinsey's looking around, look, there's not much to find. There's nothing in his paperwork. Everybody in the town loved him, did a lot of good work in the town, a lot of charity work, helped a lot of people. Seemed like to be an angel, basically, in the town. The only thing is his notebook is missing. And it was his notebook he took around while he was on the force, on, on shift. That's missing. Nobody can find it. It's not at his desk at home. It's not in his car. It's just gone missing. But her just asking questions and digging around very casually most of the time, because she can't really do much in this town. There's not much to go on. But it's pushing somebody's buttons, it seems, because she's attacked. So she's spending her evenings in a cabin. It's a very secluded cabin in the woods. She just hired it. And it's a cabin in a cabin park, basically. But she's attacked and injured and quite severely injured. You know, dislocated fingers, you know, whacked over the head, that sort of thing. She does manage to get help and get taken to hospital, but that attack makes her think that she's onto something, that there's something there about Tom that somebody else doesn't want her to find out. So she's hungry now to find out what that is, and she's got a bit of a clue that something could be linked to Santa Teresa, and she lives in Santa Teresa. So she takes the opportunity to go back home, to recover a bit, till her fingers and her injuries uh, recovered enough so she can return back if she wants to. And while she's there, she does some more digging. So Kinsey's digging around trying to find out more about Tom in Santa Teresa. And it seems to be a link to somebody in the sheriff's office in Santa Teresa. 
She's trying to find out who that is. And it's a woman. And she wants to find out who this woman is. Was Tom, the angel, having an affair with this woman? Is that the secret? Or is something else going on that somebody else doesn't want her to know about? I'll just say one more thing about this mystery. We had two ex-convicts. And they're linked to this mystery. We find that out as the story goes on. One's quite violent and one was there for other things. But they're both quite dangerous. What we do know is that at one stage, quite recently in the history of this book, they were both in this small community. And they were there because the violent ex-convict, one of his kids, lives in this town. And they were both staying with this person in the town. Kinsey is not sure at the stage where the link is. She's trying to find that out. How is this violent ex-criminal linked to this overall mystery? So Kinsey does go back to this small town to try to find that out. And I'll leave the mystery there. Because if you want to find out yourself, you'll read the book. But the ending, I didn't really like the ending that much. The mystery, even though it wasn't strong... It developed okay as the book went on, and it did get stronger as the book went on. I thought the mystery was very poor and very weak at the start, but I thought it opened up more and more, I guess, meaty things hooked onto the mystery as the story went on. So that was good, but still not the best book in this series. I think it's a bit of a blip, actually, that this book isn't as good as other books in the series. I'm hoping that as the series goes on, we'll get some stronger books and we'll see more of the supporting characters. So even though the mystery itself and the story itself wasn't as strong as other books in this series, I think the characters were still written quite well. The first I'll talk about is Selma. Now Selma is the person who's asked Kinsey to investigate, you know, to find out what was on her husband's mind before he died. And that's how it all starts in this book. She's an okay character. She's written quite well. She's quite unstable, it seems. She seems to have a lot of ups and downs. You can understand that because she's still grieving. I mean, her husband only died a few weeks ago before this book starts. So you can understand her mood swings as a character in this book. I thought Sue Grafton really brought about this character's true essence and showed a bit of compassion as well for what this character would be going through in real life, if this was real life and not a story. So in that way, I thought it was well written. She's well created and well crafted. And I guess get a sense that you can picture Selma. You can picture really who she is. And in her scenes, you can kind of just see her. And you can understand all her motivations, her thoughts and actions. So a good character, written quite well as an unstable character. But you can understand everything about her. Rafa is one of the people on the police force in this town and is written as a very close-minded person, not close-minded as personality, but close-minded as doesn't like strangers, doesn't like interference from outsiders. So in that way, Sue Grafton created a good character, this small town policeman who doesn't like interference. And that's shown all through this book. So a good character and written so well that becomes a suspect in this book. And so we've got many suspects in this book again. So even though the mystery is not strong, Sue Crafton was able to create strong characters that create many suspects. Colleen Sellers is a sheriff's deputy in Santa Teresa that's linked to this overall mystery. She's also written quite well and I think her character was developed quite well even though she's only there for a very short time. She starts off being very suspicious of Kinsey, not giving much away. Kinsey has to work hard to get anything out of her. And I enjoyed that in this story. I enjoyed Kinsey, you know, having to work hard to get information from this character. Because it made Colleen seem a bit more real, a bit more lifelike. And she's a character that has flaws as well, who's made mistakes. And you just see that in this character. You see her, her all her emotions come out as well. It's really true and very strong. So I think it's another character that's written very well, adds to this story, adds to the mystery, as wicked as it is, but again, a strongly written character. In His Fanoos is a book where the characters are the strongest part. The mystery is okay. It's very weak at the start. It slowly gets better towards the end of the book. 
but I didn't like the start of this book. I didn't like the ending either. The ending felt like it was all closed off by chance, by luck. I didn't like that. I prefer the endings where Kinsey's worked hard to find the answers, not where everything just happens for no reason, and it's all about luck. I rate this a 3 out of 5. That's because of the characters, and the slowly increasing development of the mystery, but mainly the characters. So again, the characters are very strong in this book. Even if other things aren't as strong, I think you can always rely on Sue Grafton to write really good characters, or you can in most of her books anyway. On my channel, I will review every book in this series. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. There's also a Sue Crafton playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.